This is a wrap up of uh, 2014, my wife and I's first year uh, in the metal detecting hobby. This is what she carries, a uh, pro pointer with a key back that retracts so you don't lose it. She's got a Lesh digging tool. I've got a Hori Hori that I welded a, a push handle onto. Uh, I've got the pro pointer and a key back to retract it and a holder for my Samson shovel on a military belt. And that's what we carry in the woods. Uh, she's also got a, a strong whistle here in case we run into somebody who's going to give us trouble. Here are our weapons of choice. We've got a, a nice Garrett AT Pro with a uh, small coil, the 6x8. We've got a Garrett 350 um, with a standard 8x11 coil. Uh, we operate these two machines in parallel next to each other because they don't interfere with each other. She's also got a 4 inch sniper coil for the 350 and a 15 inch uh, big coil, Nell big coil for the same machine. I typically just operate with the AT Pro and double check some of her discoveries. Uh, for shovels we use uh, primarily the the Samson style that clips on my belt and a short shovel you can get at Ace Hardware for shallow digs and sand and uh, I built a, a digger out of a stainless steel um, silverware holder and I cut it and bolted it onto a a hoe handle, stainless hoe handle. This being our first year in the sport we relied heavily on YouTube videos and any blogs we could get our hands on and another uh, professional uh, mentor that helped us get through the year, our first year of digging. Uh, this is a sample of what we find for the for the year for pennies. Basically uh, probably a total of 800 coins, I'm guessing. Uh, these are just standard clad. Uh, these are wheat, wheat pennies. Uh, these are, uh, I would say, the better coins I'll show you in a minute. Nickels, uh, dimes, and quarters, quite a few quarters. The wheat pennies my wife and I found are basically these here. Uh, since we live in uh, Massachusetts near a military base, uh, a lot of the mercury dimes were showing up at the, the ponds nearby. Uh, I came across a couple of uh, 29 and a 36 core that were sitting on top of each other. Uh, an African coin on a beach, uh, half penny, a couple of buffalo nickels, and these are assorted uh, older coins from the same period. Quarters. This being our first year, we also confirmed the the uh, thought that the beaches are the place to practice the hobby, and the real excitement comes from digging. In the backwoods, uh, any old sites you spotted on maps. Since our trash to treasure ratio is at least six to one, I'll show you some of the items that you'll commonly toys and plumbing fittings and flattened pennies and washers, sinkers, keys. And remember, for every pound of this, we've found probably six pounds of trash, which I won't bother to show you. The other common items you'll pick up in a field are what we call bling. And it's just items that fall from flea markets and cars and uh, it's earrings and Boy Scout 
tie clips and occasional wristwatch that still works, rings, earrings, gold chains. That's what we found mostly this year. And on occasion something nice. This is an 1818 Spanish Real that uh, was drilled to be a piece of jewelry at one time. In our first year we've been able to meet up with other people doing similar activities and they've showed us some shared some areas with us uh, to explore in uh, nearby towns. Um, some of these items are from the 1600s. I mean these are from campsite where uh, it's, a spit was put across two stakes and a fire to cook an animal. Uh, this is a large scent uh, with really nothing left to it. Um, a lead musket ball, a steel shot. Uh, this is a rosette from a horse bridle where the leather went through there. This is a suspender buckle. This is a door striker. And uh, a silver spoon from uh, one of the older towns in the area. During, during the year when we visited friends in New Hampshire, we've explored uh, around their properties. Uh, there's a couple of ox shoes. Uh, this is an ox knob. It's a, a tapered thread for the place for a, a wrench to go on. This would go over the ox's horn so that you wouldn't be gored. Uh, this is an ornamental uh, buckle, but it's actually a, uh, a woman's pin shaped to look like a buckle. And uh, an old dart. And uh, uh, this is actually a, uh, a mixed date. This is uh, a cuff buckle, uh, probably World War II or so. It just happened to be on the in the woods, and this is a a spike nail, probably from a, a large timber. Our first year, we also followed the advice of, of trying to explore very close to our house so that we could get there fast and uh, try to get some experience in at this hobby. Uh, here we are in back of our house. Uh, there's a cranberry bog and there's a few belt buckles, uh, a lead ball, a jackknife. This is a coin purse that was uh, spring-loaded, used to hold uh, nickels and dimes in the 1800. It folds and locks and it would hang on your belt. This is uh, a solar a headlamp from an old car or bicycle from that same period uh, found at the Cranberry Bar. Nearby at an old trading post we found uh, an old hotel key from a hotel that used to be there in the tracks and some hair scissors, a spoon, uh, some suspender clips, and of course the old square name. Also representing time gone by is the old cast iron sign from the street. An ox shoe from another generation. And a hash pipe from this generation. All in the same spot. Now, now during our first year we were able to uh, search for four different sites through old maps. Uh, this one we just started to work on and the poison ivy just held us back. We were hoping to get out at the spring. But this particular site took us quite a while to find and uh, it was a horseshoe, a hammer with a, a broken claw, some buckles. Uh, this is a herring run area. These are snagging hooks for snagging herring. This is a pendulum off uh, an old uh, clock. This is the old glass of the time. The pottery. Some door 
uh, or drawer hardware rather, uh, a bell, maybe off the front door, some tractor uh, hardware, some flat buttons that are gilded. This is a uh, clothing iron. I don't know if you can see it. It's a small iron. Uh, suspender buckle. This is uh, an oil lamp, uh, which the date is all usually written on the inside of the thimble. And that's the, the wick area. This is a tinkler. This is a piece of uh, uh, American Indian jewelry that was meant to uh, rattle as it was worn on the wrist. It's uh, all made from embossed copper. This is a man's wedding band. Also copper. This was the Civil War period. So we don't expect to find anything um, uh, gold at all. Now I'll show you the site that we spent the most time on our first uh, discovery. Um, there are some uh, crude hand tools. Uh, two-pronged hay fork, uh, bridle buckle, a frog spear, and uh, an old square spike. Um, a side note, I'll show you the equipment I use. A lot of these items are so heavily oxidized and rusted, uh, they're unrecognizable at first. And here's what I use to uh, change the I use uh, electrolysis to uh, remove heavy rust and scale. You can look it up on the internet how that's actually done. But I just use a simple telephone charger and I put clip leads on the end of it. And uh, I use a sacrificial chunk of iron that I found in my diggings. And it works quite well to uh, remove scale coins to clean them up since there are so many I have a little tumbler here from Harbor Freight that works adequately since these items have been underground for some for 150 years uh, when they do hit the air they oxidize very rapidly so uh, what I try to do is either throw electrolysis or just hand cleaning them up is get them to a state put them in the oven, dry them off really well, and uh, then dip them in a plasticizer called Guards, made by Zinzer. It's essentially a, a plastic, paint plastic without any solids in it. So this was uh, a horseshoe that's done with Guards. It's a little shinier than you'd like to see it, but it will not rust anymore. It's sealed in. The same thing with this. Uh, double-edged uh, hatchet, uh, this old hatchet, the lock, uh, this butter knife from the early 1900s uh, is not going to rust anymore. And perhaps the most fascinating thing for my wife and I this first year of metal detecting has been finding a, a site that has a story to it. The items we find actually bring us back to a period in time that we're not even familiar with today. Uh, here's the example. We have a lot of uh, ornate women's buttons, some small tassel buttons, uh, a very ornate brass uh, button in great shape that's been sitting on the ground for years. Uh, women's embossed copper band, ring, very simple made of copper, uh, a Japanese style button that is uh, obviously has come in from somebody else to their house, um, a tinkler, another one with a, a native uh, theme to it being the grape leaf and the other one I showed you prior was a fern leaf. The, uh, to date this site, it's, it was uh, clear 
when we came across uh, the Indian head from 1864 and uh, shield nickel which was only made for four years and uh, of course the uh, the thimbles from the oil wick lamps uh, some clockworks a musket ball that's been made at home here's a puddle from the same pouring um, is a piece of, of flatware uh, remains of a knife this is a thimble it's not uh, silver it's the common uh, brass thimble some uh, horse rings uh, horse bridle buckles here a harmonica reeds uh, different sizes the glass of the day the uh, the blue pottery uh, an, uh, an emblem maybe off a door that that held a name behind it this is a suspender buckle as is this so from this little collection that we found this site we can tell that a man and a woman lived here that they had a horse uh, gun they used uh, common jewelry for the time uh, it's been a great year for us thanks for watching